Let's talk Squaw Valley, at least while it's still called that. The Squaw Valley Ski Resort oh, oh, yeah. in Lake Tahoe has been renamed in an effort to take the word squaw out of the title. I feel like I should stop saying it, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you kind of what it refers to. It'll now be called Palisades Tahoe, which is said to honor, quote, the resort's history as a home to free skiing pioneers, winter Olympians, and cultural icons across more than seven decades of ski history. So the word squaw is reportedly just Algonquin for a female. But at one point and over the generations, it became more of a misogynistic, yeah, like a concubine yeah, racist right? term to uh, disparage indigenous women. Yeah, as clearly defined in Cher's half-breed. Oh, then, then did she drop a squaw? She thinks <laughs> she was a squaw. Pop a squaw? <laughs> I think she was called the Indian squaw. I and wouldn't I doubt think it. There's a lyric in there. Oh, we uh, should listen to that immediately. Yeah, we should suss that out. Uh, how much? Yeah, it says the white man always called me Indian squaw. That's Grab right. That. Let me get that. Did um, <laughs> so I'm trying to think, and uh, as as uh, Mike August said, uh, enjoy your Chiefs while you can. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, I was corrected. Though. The, the Indians are changing their team name at the end of the oh, year. Oh, they are. Oh, so the next writing's on the wall. Mm. Yeah, but I, I would say most fans would think this and I'm being partial but I don't think Kansas City fans are gonna go for it I, I they're not really the kind to stand down but let me explain how it works Custer's last stand yeah. you're essentially the dawn a good uh, custard place called that of a um, mafia group mm -hmm. and all your lieutenants are getting whacked yeah. you know what I mean and the writings on the wall they're coming for you that's they will get to you you're Phil Leotardo in the last episode thank that's right. you for making it something I can understand the also <laughs> now so how much first off I didn't hear a lot of pressure about Squaw Valley no first I heard of it but well, how much of this is them trying to enter the conversation I, I'm glad you said that they do in in some of the articles I read there are um, tribal leaders that speak Spoke up. I don't know how involved they were. I don't know if they were reached out to or if they did the reaching out. Mm -hmm. But you're right. It is something nobody would have talked about until now. Right. And Palisades Tahoe. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's as good as anything else. Uh, Tommy Lee has thoughts about this Hulu miniseries about the the infamous sex tape with Pam and uh, Pam and himself. But guess what? He's into it. He says he has no problems with Pam and Tommy that's coming out. He uh, he tells Entertainment Tonight that he hasn't seen any photos from the set where Sebastian Stan, the actor, looks a lot like him from the 90s. Lee says, quote, I think a lot of people would think it's one thing, but it's really about privacy and how crazy things got. Uh, Lee and Anderson, Anderson's played by Lily James, had nothing to do with the series, Lee and Anderson. Uh, the Pamela and Pam. Had nothing to do with it? Or? Pam and Tommy Lee had nothing to do with yeah. it. Lily James is playing Pamela. And it is a 25-year-old scandal. Wow. 25 the, years. The prosthetics department had to get to work <laughs> 14 months early. But I think Tommy's probably onto something. I don't know a lot about it. I think it was optioned from an article in Esquire, I want to say. But it, I, I think it does wag the finger at the guy who stole it, not at Pam and Tommy. Funny, I have a few thoughts. One is, I was thinking about one of the last times I saw Tommy Lee and he licked my face. Oh, God, COVID. And I thought, that's not good in the COVID era. <laughs> but then I was also thinking about steering a houseboat with your hog. Yeah. Another another violation of COVID protocol. Hygiene protocol. I don't know. Get Fauci on the blower. Let's double check. It's <laughs> a buzzkill. I'm just saying, don't do it. Yeah. So uh, I was at his house, of, God, a couple of months back doing an interview with his uh, wife, and he was out golfing. I love showing up to guys' houses sort of midweek mm. and to find out they're doing something recreational right, in the right. middle of the week, Not in the middle in. the middle of the day. Just, uh, just out golfing. Living life. Yeah. Just living life. I like the thought of him golfing, too. I love the thought of Alice Cooper being such an avid golfer. Yeah. He bought, he bought golf pants for me at Hugo Boss a million years ago, and I was like, oh, everybody golfs. Yeah, uh, Tommy Lee golfing. Um, his, He's probably a good golfer. I mean, the fucking guy's lanky. That's on a torque. Mm. He, he golfs with his. He uh, <laughs> he has his own club. He uh, he was on this show. I don't know when he was on a year ago or something like that. Nine months ago, I I can't recall. I think but that he, was a one on one. Brittany, yeah, he was Furland as his wife. I did her podcast, but October. October. Okay, we're coming on to a year. Um, 
she, he, he told the whole story and the whole story is pretty insane. Yeah. I mean, he literally had the safe, had it hidden behind like sort of a rug in the thing. They were doing the remod. Wow. It was in the garage. Somebody moved the rug, got into the safe, and he didn't find out till someone said, turn on the TV set. It was one of those things. I think nice. everyone always thinks that the principals have this sort of pre-notion yeah. of stuff. Uh, he did not. <laughs> he just turned on the TV set and the whole videotape thing. And then, of course, did that thing. Like, you you know that feeling you ever have, that feeling of like, we've all experienced it. Like you're traveling and at some point, you know, you're going through the airport and someone goes, oh, I need your ID. And then you go, okay. And you open your backpack and you kind of look in the mm-hmm. first compartment. And it's like, oh, it's not there. Mm-hmm. Then you go, oh, it, it must have, I must have put it in with General Pop in the backpack. And you open the big, it's not that, that weird sinking kind mm-hmm. of like Indeed. shit. Where yep. is this thing, you know, that I rely on? Imagine a feeling of like seeing it on the TV set and then going and then running to the garage, moving the carpet, opening the safe and it's gone. It's gone. Terrifying. Like now it's just been confirmed. Although I'd like I have to think that you said to him for all of the things to be scandalized. This is a this is top 10. This is something you should only pray to the gods that you're that everybody knows what a big dick you have. Well, thank you. Let's focus on Tommy Lee. But. You, but I appreciate that. Yeah, it was just in general. Start but closing the door to the urinal bathroom. Yeah, it's you usually wide open. Eyes. Yeah, well, what we get now, you talk about double standard. What we know is Tommy Lee's got a huge hog, uh, and Tommy Lee's banging a beautiful the hottest, woman, the hottest yeah. chick on the planet. That's what he gets. Then there's her. Yeah. That's oh, the what a slut. Yeah. Yeah. It's the what worst. year was that sex tape? Twenty five years ago. So ninety six. Nineties. Oh yeah, because you mentioned a long time ago about like oh everyone has that uh, porno they know from their childhood, your sex boat or that, that sort of uh, seminal houseboat, <laughs> seminal yeah uh, uh, porno. That was a uh, Pam and Tommy Lee for me. Oh really? Yeah, that dude. That was a phenomenon. I was I was probably a senior in high school. I've often talked about. This thing where when I was a kid, you would watch, you know, the sexiest women on TV. First off, Linda Carter, Wonder Mm. Woman. Holy shit. You know, Charlie's Angels, Cheryl Ladd. You know, these were there was a handful of women. I mean, all of the Charlie's Angels, uh, Daisy Duke, Mm -hmm. you know, the uh, uh, Elizabeth Montgomery Bewitch. You know, there was like a handful of these women that you know, Lori Partridge, you mm-hmm. know, the the Keith's younger sister. Like there was a handful of women that I just grew up watching uh on TV and going like, oh my God. If only I could see oh, that. Oh my oh, oh, side imagine, boob. Dude, side <laughs> boob. But to find out now that half these people either they have a bootleg porn or somebody hacked into their system yeah. and and whatever. I mean, it's it's got to be mind numbing for a kid. It'll be impossible to explain to the future generation. Oh, the hottest! Everyone agreed the consensus hottest girl uh, or hottest woman on the on the planet, uh, Pam Anderson, uh, all of a sudden had a, a sex tape that was released if, oh, unbeknownst to her. Yes, I don't want to take the high road here, but I'm going to. I've I've seen clips like just whatever, but it's, if it's like a famous actress, her phone's been hacked. I will not look at that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to Google search that. It's a different that. time, Gina. Okay, I didn't realize that. Oh, I was well, seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean in general, like oh, like Jennifer Lawrence. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I don't want to see it. That that's that's to me that's kind of fucked up. But uh, you know, God bless. Well, when Tommy we Lee. found out oh, Christy, kill. When we found out Christy Canyon did a porn movie. That that's different. It was, we grew up with her. When we found that out, it was like the movie Mad, Mad, Mad World. Like people were <laughs> running. could you get there? <laughs> knocked a guy off a motorcycle, <laughs> commandeered it, spun it around, <laughs> rode a wheelie. Every guy's jumping in their car. Like we found out there was one like Korean owned video store on the wrong side of town that had this thing. It was like, go, go, go. Oh, I was, was running down the stairs. It was the end of the Blues Brothers. All yes. the cops show up. No, that's awesome. Helicopters. It was. She was a movie star. It was insane. That's great.
Uh, let's talk Britney Spears. She is engaged to Sam Eshgari, which I feel like AJ has feelings about. May have to check in with him. That, But that's not the headline. The headline is they're already working on her prenup. Whole crew is working on this. Uh, sources tell TMZ that her camp is mobilized to get this document drafted. Reportedly worth around $60 million, which I think AJ said was like way lower. It should be in the couple hundred million, but because of, you know, possible money moved around or not given directly to her, it's 60. Mm. Uh, Sam joked that he was the one who wanted the prenup. He wanted to protect his Jeep and his shoe collection. And uh, they just announced their engagement. He has a very meathead kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm driving a Jeep Mm -hmm. with no doors, with a lift kit on it. Like, he's just a dude, dude. But I'm not sure if those... Dude dudes or dudes or they're doing the sort of poser dude. Well, Dr. Drew would doing always think a dude should do. Mm. Yeah. We're Pam Anderson. Speaking of Pam Anderson, Dr. Drew would talk about female, female impersonator. Right. You know, the voice is there. The whole thing. It's like they're literally they're female, right. female impersonators. Yes. I think there's some male, male impersonators, too. Mm. Yeah. They're doing everything to try to give the appearance of dude. masculinity. That is the greatest story I have ever heard. Only be a new one. Yeah, because the dudes I know that are real dudes, they don't they're not caricature right. dudes. They like sports and they like their stuff. They like all the dude stuff, but yeah. you wouldn't know it by how they dress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For instance, they wear a lot yeah. of sweatpants and flip flops and then go into their dude stuff, sure. but you don't know you wouldn't be able to see it from down the street. Yeah. You know? You're no, you're right. I think when it comes to stuff like TikTok and YouTube, like those are kind of male male impersonators. Mm-hmm. That's I think that's kind of the vibe this guy's given out. Yeah. Um, Nicki Minaj in the news for a, an odd tweet uh, that everybody's talking about today. She did not go to the Met Gala Monday night because it, it required a COVID vaccine. But um, she tweeted this story about a cousin she has in Trinidad who she says, and you can put it up, became impotent after the COVID shot and his testicles swelled up. Uh, so much so that his girlfriend called off their wedding. This tweet Retweeted 20,000 times, <laughs> quoted 80, almost 87,000 times. It says, my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it. Make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. Um, more than yeah, many, many people have sort of critically commented on this my cousin's friend thing, like it's my girlfriend Ferris in Bueller Canada. Shit. Exactly. And um, wondering what happened or where he got the shot that might have made his nuts swell. Um, Nikki is also urging people to wear masks with two straps that grips your head. She, you know, she's she's trying to find her way through this science. But Joy <laughs> Reid, uh, who you're familiar with. Has oh, thoughts she's on this? A delight. No, well, now, the best. now there's a, a bit of a beef between Nikki and Joy. This is what she has to say. Like Nikki Minaj, I have to say this: You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Get it? Okay, I have two million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter. For you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives. My God, sister, you could do better than that. You got that platform. It's it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you got that, that people listen to you. And they listen to you more than they listen to me. For you to use your platform to put people in the position of dying from a disease they don't have to die from. Oh, my God. As a fan, as a hip hop fan, as somebody who was your fan, I'm so sad that you did that. So sad that you did that, sister. Oh, my God. What happened to Joy's hair? She changed that a shit up a are, lot. A lot of it, us are going curly. It fell. <laughs> Did uh, it's the the Met Gala? It's a little vulgar now, right? Well, the theme was like I don't know, like Americana or something. To which Kim Kardashian said, "Oh, so I should show up as the gimp." She like, showed up as a gimp in leather. It what, just, what with a face mean? mask and like you know, like what? bring out the gimp. What does that do with Americana? I I don't oh. know. Maybe the dominatrix culture. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I, either. Although that I, feels German. Well, Kanye was like wearing a sock over his head last time he did the yeah. record release party oh. in New Orleans or wherever he did it. Uh, it just feels, I, I don't know, like it's a, also there's a thing now when wherever there's these huge garish galas or mag, mega parties with super rich mm-hmm. people, 
the staff is all wearing masks, but no one, no one who's sure. attending the party is, and it kind of gives a us and them kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird, like. Yeah. You do this big thing and everyone who's serving you like is wearing a mask. But you will see that at my wedding. You're not wearing a mask. <laughs> I know it's the rule it's for, the, the for, the, for the venue, but, yes, but it, but it yes. just has a way. I don't know. It's just weird optically. No, it's it's a little handmaidsy. You're right. It's a little subordinate. Mm-hmm. It's also getting back to falling off the skateboard and wanting the attention or popping back up. <laughs> it feels like that would seem like the most uncomfortable thing in the world to get dressed up that way and to walk down that Red carpet. I think it's a self-selecting sample. It, it, it is. It is. Also, Who should be judged? We but you should know, judge all of them. It's the other side of the coin of people being like, shut up. I don't want to see any politics or COVID talk during like a football game. Just let me go into this, you know, fantasy of just watching sports like everything's OK. And I'm sure there's people that think that about these things. Like, let me just watch this campy, you know, celebrity show and not think about the rest of the world. Yeah. See Lady Gaga on a garbage bag or whatever she did. It's so it's weird. It's it's counterintuitive. Indeed. To me, is what it is. You guys like scotch, right? Isn't and by the way, I feel like Nicki Minaj just has no filter. Like it's right. hard it, she just says whatever. Yeah, she's a prost fucking, New Yorker, dude. She, whatever like Cardi in, B has no filter. In her head. Yeah. It just it just comes flying out of her mouth. Sure. Sorry. But she's doing a lot of fighting with people today on Twitter about it. So I think she's <laughs> really digging her heels in. You know, it's nice that we have we've entered a a, a, a chapter historically where you don't have to leave the house to fight. Oh, it's so convenient. Like you used to have to leave the house to work. You don't really have to do that anymore. Now you can fight. You to go to New and Jersey. And by the way, bed. it used to be you'd have to fight one person at a time. Now you <laughs> no. can fight 22,000 people Everyone. at a time. And it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, all right, we'll move on to scotch. 250 decanters of what may be the oldest single malt scotch ever put in bottles are going up for auction in a little while. Really? So this stuff is 80 years old and hasn't seen the light of day until now. Barons.com reports that the whiskey has matured in an oak cask, cask 340, since 1940 at the Glenlivet Distillery of Gordon and McPhail. The whiskey maker decided to bottle it in February of last year in a new decanter. I think we have a picture. And oak case uh, designed by renowned architect David Ajaye. 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 Um, How, what do we think it's going to go for? Well... I can tell you what the lot's worth up to. Mm-hmm. You mean each individual bottle? Sorry. The, no, well, let, let, me, yeah. let me just tell you this part. The first decanter will be offered alongside the framed original cask head, uh, a whiskey tasting experience for four in London, and a one-on-one signed lithograph of Ajaye's original drawing. Uh, that's going to be at Sotheby's Hong Kong October 7th. The industry insiders expect that the entire lot is worth up to 200000 though it could go higher. So oh. what do you think a bottle's going to go for? So uh, eighty bottles, you said? Yeah. So that's a uh, what? Two two fifty two twenty five hundred a bottle? No, no, two fifty two hundred fifty decanters. Oh, it's eighty years old. Well, either way, I'm let's shocked. Just, it's only about anyway. seems seems it reasonable. But Can like, I say eighty million in this story instead? Here, here's no. okay. Go right, ahead. Here's the deal: pay your two grand or whatever it is, get your bottle, mm-hmm. drink your booze. Now, you need to keep the bottle. Right. We keep the bottle oh, yeah. and the story <laughs> and all the shit that goes along with it. And then you get yourself a lucite uh, table, you know, a stand, a, display a pedestal, case, display yeah. case, underlit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then you, you fill it with bullet rye. Or gold peak iced tea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just beam. Do, no, no, no. You're missing the point here. Oh, okay. Full it, put bullet rye in okay. it or put my rye in it. I'm trying to think. Magnolia rye now. It's not, uh, 818. not 818 anymore. Just... Just find some fair to Midland thirty dollar mm-hmm. bottle rye. Just fill that up, and then whenever somebody comes to the house, you want to fuck, yeah. you go right for that bottle. The, by the way, that twenty six year old hostess <laughs> from the club like you picked knows. up on or the sushi joint, yeah. you, really? No, she's gonna know. No, she's not gonna know. And then you, you know, pour yourselves a splash, get to banging, and then refill. That's smart. That's where that bottle pays dividends. Genius. That's where it keeps giving. Yeah. You get the it's authenticity note. Yep. You get the note from the architect or the artist. Yep. It puts all there. You, you know, really 18 bucks worth of lucite and some uh, some uh, silicone. You put mm-hmm. that stand some together. Track lighting. Go with the underlight. Yeah. It's all there. No one's going to. Who could say a word? 
Nobody. There's nobody's going to taste mm-hmm. that rye and go, oh, come on, no I know way. rye, I'm seasoned. I know, I've, 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 I've toured no. uh, Scotland and Ireland, and I know, and Kentucky, and I know. They're the but, last ones that would say anything. Right. In fact, you might want it to taste a little off. It's 80 years old. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. I think that's a great idea, worth the investment. Um, I would be shocked if Nancy Grace isn't all over this story, because this is the story that we're all worried oh. about. All the moms, all the ladies. The blonde girl? No. Oh. Different story. Mm. A Florida mother has been reunited with her 19-year-old daughter who was abducted by her father when she was six years old. Oh. Angelica Vences Salgada called the police on September 2nd. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for you. Oh, oh okay. For you. Uh, that Definitely she, not a Jew. <laughs> she received a message on social media from a woman claiming to be her daughter, Jacqueline Hernandez. She's now 19. She was allegedly taken from her bedroom when she was just a little kid by her father, Pablo Hernandez, and hadn't heard from either of them since. A warrant was immediately issued for the father, who's believed to have absconded with Jacqueline to Mexico. Uh, Jacqueline wrote in this message to her mother that she was in mes- Mexico, asked to meet her at the point of entry in Laredo, Texas. Investigators verified it was Jacqueline. The two finally reunited. Details of her life since the abduction uh, not released. No one knows where the father is. Oh, I thought you were talking. There's a story I saw this morning about a attractive blonde woman mm. who's gone missing, young person. Well, now we're talking. Nancy, they were doing a whole thing where she was with her boyfriend and they were going to tour the United States like in a Winnebago or something. They were mm-hmm. going you know, through the Grand Canyon and to the Grand Tetons mm-hmm. and up Means through boobs. Monument Valley mm-hmm. and taking pictures and stuff all along the way. And she's a pretty young blonde, and that's where the news gets in. Well, isn't that convenient? All of us, she always wanted to go on a beautiful romantic trip to, say, Venice, Italy, or Paris, France, and then you have the scumbag husband saying, oh, no, honey, let's spend our money on a Winnebago, and I'll drop you into the middle of the Grand Canyon. How does that sound? She was on a van life road trip. Yeah. And, oh, those uh, like influencers. Her and her man were like going and they chronicled. Oh. Now, the thing about it is, is now that everything's chronicled, oh, oh. you take a picture every 46 feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it it's like a off picture. a tower. She's in the cloud. And wherever yeah. you are, even if you just have the picture, you can chart yeah. it. Well, they left. Yep. They left California. And now they're in Vegas, and oh, now they're in Utah, cute. and now they're in oh. Monument Valley. She's you know? very young. Yeah. Well, you know, I hate to sound that old, but Brian will back me up on this, man. You see the rookie quarterbacks interviewed like mm-hmm. after the professional games mm-hmm. and the guy's 22 and a half. Wait and a like, second. The guy's in high school. Exactly. Like, he looks like a baby. I don't he like what like you're implying. Professional <laughs> football player. Like it's uh, you get a little older. Okay, fine. She's 25. Well, she could be 19 or 21 yeah. or what is you go to she? Enough, 22. 22. Go to enough USC tailgates over the year. You get older and all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, these, uh, these they girls stay the here, same age. They're, they're, they're in college, but they're like very young. Yeah. Yep. The uh, but what and and the boy is just uh what beside I, it was the kind of thing where it's like the news was on and they kept rolling this and I was walking in and out and I don't mm. really remember the full details but I do clearly kind of get that if this is a pudgy Hispanic chick we're not quite as interested the media attention the beautiful blondes now you're that that. Yeah. Th- that puts the fannies in the seats. I, so I think that's true. And she was on a van trip. She was going across the country. She had her boyfriend, and that's about that's about where it mm. ended. Now I don't know, Chris. Did they have the boyfriend? Are they blaming them, Nancy? Do you think it's a boyfriend? If, do I think it's the boyfriend, or do I know it's the boyfriend? Have you? Is this your first day at this job, Adam Carolla? No, but the boyfriend could have been a victim as well. Uh, Oh, please, that and a nickel will get you a gumball. You know, we always say the husband did it. The only exception to that is the boyfriend. When they're not married yet, it don't mean he's less of a homicidal maniac. Yeah, but maybe it was like marauding bikers or something. Came oh, and sure, her because up. they love just flapping through Malibu and, and just driving and raising hell through Pasadena. No, no, no. This was a California road trip. You don't see Hell's Angels. No, and- I, I think she left 
or I don't know if she left California or maybe she left the East Coast, but she was going through the country. So. I'll believe it when somebody from Sturgis says, hello, I killed this young, beautiful girl. Until then, I think we all know who did it. Saying the boyfriend? Obviously. Okay. I just, well, I'm sorry, but y'all are so dumb sometimes. Oh, look, You're I'm, so obtuse. I don't even know what that word means, but I resent it. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like let's not rush to judgment. I feel like sometimes you rush to judgment. I have been doing this for so many years, Adam Carolla. I could do this in my sleep, and sometimes I do. I don't need evidence. I don't need to know the story. I know the boyfriend is guilty as sin, and i that's all I'm going to say about that. Well, you may be on to something because oh, shocking. Uh, it's her fiance returned to Florida. Oh boy. With, Everybody knows strike one. with the van <laughs> and he's, two. he's not talking to the police. Like three year out. And if I let's see, if I were a murdering boyfriend and I was trying to get away from the law, where would I go? Oh, I know the lawless swamp known as Florida. I think we just put this baby to bed. Well, the police have not identified uh, the fiancé as a Mm. suspect. A person of interest? Or associated him with the disappearance. Mm. Although, if you're just taking a picture next to the Grand Canyon Mm. and your fiancé tumbles down the Grand Canyon, I feel like you just hustle into town or call the paramedics. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay on this one. You probably wouldn't just drive the empty van back to Florida. (laughs) And take the fifth. Yeah. I ain't talking. (laughs) Yeah, it does seem a little suspicious. It's kind of, I, I'll tell you one thing about all these stories. It's comforting to know that as we w- go through life constantly worrying about stranger danger, <laughs> you know, this this homeless yep. guy drives a van, he's going he's gonna to wander yep. into town and abduct your kids. There's a very good chance that if you're murdered, it'll be by the person sleeping next to you that uh, night that while you're comforting. worrying about oh, the stranger. <laughs> or if you're abducted or sexually yeah. molested as a child, there's a very good chance it'll be somebody mm-hmm. living in your house mm-hmm. with you. We're yeah. so Part of the nuclear family. Yes, we're so obsessed with uh, the uh, the the guy who the the drifter who yes. blows into town. It's not them. He's yeah. just minding his own business. It'll be us. Yeah. I think you're right. The All boyfriend. Right. You guessed it. Frank Stallone. Really? <laughs> that's a tribute to Norm. Oh, that's that was one of Norm's jokes. That was a recurring joke. Are we gonna update? I don't. Rem- oh yes, remember I remember that. that. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. The white man always called me Indian Squaw. <laughs> Gina, Gina. Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, last but not least, there's Tommy John Apollo. Oh, man, the newest and most advanced men's underwear, performance grade, dry release fabric blend exclusive to Tommy John. Can't get it anywhere else. Apollo men's underwear proven to keep you drier and up to seven degrees cooler than regular cotton underwear. No more flopping or sticking or chafing. Soft, supportive stretches to the perfect fit available in sizes up to 4XL. Over 15 million pairs sold. Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Um, I don't know. I hope everyone listening has switched already, but uh, a great gift for uh, the man in your life, the woman as well. Uh, Once you get into it, you do not switch back. You just, Tommy John's your only option. Uh, And Tommy John underwear, just like uh, their new Apollo underwear, comes with the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guarantee. Right, Dawson? Right now, get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Adam for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. All right, Solana Beach, we'll be doing some live pods there with Adam Ray and uh, stand up there as well at the Belly Up. That'll be September 22nd. Chicago Park West, September 24th, be doing stand up there. Go to adamcroll.com because I'm doing shows all over the country. And until next time, Sam Krola for Michael Moriarty and Gina Grad and Bob Bryan, say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.